folks. I'm Dave from MyGunValues.com and we'll welcome you back here to our YouTube channel. And today I'm going to do something I've avoided doing, <coughs> at least on video, since we uh, launched the website. And I'm going to talk about gun control and the idiocy surrounding it for a minute. The and I'm going to say it, the Democrats, because they're the ones pushing for it, yeah, there's some bad Republicans, whatever. Democrats are the ones pushing gun control. They're the ones that think the Second Amendment doesn't mean what it says. And we, as many of you know, I live in the state of Washington. That's where these videos are shot. And this past week, our beloved Attorney General announced he's going to be introducing legislation to ban assault weapons. As you, me, and anybody else who's watching this video probably knows, uh, assault weapons have a selector switch, making them capable of fully automatic fire. Okay? They're not assault weapons. They're semi-automatic weapons. But to illustrate just how asinine, stupid, and ignorant this is, and it's, it's not about safety, it's about taking away our rights. Um, we're going to discuss here for a few minutes how idiotic this is because evil will always find a way. And then I'm going to show you in video how idiotic it is. Okay. The three worst attacks in United States history that were not war type attacks, and in, by that I mean Pearl Harbor, um, Custer's battle, battle and the uh, Wounded Knee Massacre, which was perpetrated by our military against the Indians, those three things I consider acts of war. Now the other things you could technically say were acts of war, but we weren't at war at the time, we weren't going to be at war at the time on these things. In order they were 9-11, and yeah you could say it started the war against terror, but they'd been at war against us since the 80s in the Beirut bombing. It just finally came home on 9-11. They didn't use firearms, they used box cutters, airplanes, and airplane fuel to do the damage that they did. There's Oklahoma City, that was a nitrate fertilizer bomb. Again, no firearms used to kill anybody in that. And there was the Bath, Michigan school massacre. If you've never heard of it, look it up. It was in the late 20s, early 30s, and the perpetrator used dynamite to kill, I believe, 55 people. So guns weren't used. That's my point. Evil will always find a way. If we take away the, the assault weapons and we surrender our rights to these clowns, then they're just going to go on, and pretty soon it won't be AR-15s. It'll be, remember the Saturday Night Special fiasco of the 80s, okay? It'll be all semi-automatics. Then it'll be all pumps. Then it'll be all lever actions. Then it'll be all bolt actions. Pretty soon you're going to be in the situation you're at in England where you can own a shotgun, but it's got to be locked up at a gun club and it doesn't do you any good to protect your house. Okay, guns are a part of the American culture. They always have been. They always will be, despite what these namby-pamby, worthless politicians have to say. Now... So what, what we're going to do here today is we're going to take standard AR-15, 30 round magazine, okay, it's empty as you can see. This is an Olympic Arms basic carbine, although it has the detachable carry handle on it. 16 inch barrel. The only modification that's been done to this is the factory Olympic Arms trigger was replaced with a jarred trigger. That's the only modification that's been done to this gun. Other than that, it's as sold. We're going to shoot one 30 round magazine through this thing. There's going to be 30 uh, water bottles set up that you can see this thing fired at. And then we'll compare how this does against this. This is a Mossberg 835 pump. Okay, it's a waterfowl model. It's not a tactical model by any means, but I thought this would illustrate just, I mean, this is a gun that to hear the anti-gunners, it's not on their radar screen. Don't believe it. But this is a basic waterfowl hunting shotgun. 
holds three rounds of three and a half inch shells with the blocking tube in the magazine. However, if you remove the blocking tube, you can put five two and three quarter inch shells in the magazine and one in the chamber. Okay, that's, you know, and you can do that as long as you're not hunting with it. Hunting regulations say you've got to only have uh, three shells, which is fine. So I've removed the, the uh, blocking pin on this so it will hold six. I'm going to start out with the AR-15 shooting, uh, you know, chamber and shoot that and we're going to shoot this and I figure I can shoot roughly three magazine fulls through this thing in the same amount of time it takes me to shoot one 30 round magazine through the AR. Now the point of this is there are shotguns out there that are tactical that hold 10 rounds. There's even one out there that holds 16 rounds. Um, which is, if you haven't seen it, it's the SRM um, shotgun. Looks interesting. I haven't had the chance to try one yet, but it looks like an interesting model. My point is, it's not going to stop with the ARs. It's just a good starting point for them. Pretty soon it's going to be everything. That's what they want. That's what they've always wanted. So I'll get down off my soapbox now because I'm sick and tired of people who think they know how to live their life better than I do. And we're going to take these out and we're going to shoot them. And as soon as we're done shooting them, we'll bring them back in and we'll, we'll talk about the results. Now when I, when I do talk about the results today, I won't have had time to watch the video side by side to see what the time difference is. But I've done this experiment before and one time there was an 8 second difference and one time there was a 16 second difference. But again, keep in mind, this is only holding six rounds. Imagine if you had a tactical with 10 or two tacticals with 10. You can buy those tactical shotguns for three pumps for $379 all day long. Okay, this AR-15, this base model from Olympic Arms, run you about seven, 800 new. So anybody in 10 on doing mayhem can buy two of these and have change, spare change left over for what one AR-15 costs. And you can do the same amount of damage in virtually the same amount of time, and that's my point. So I'll go get these fired up, and then we'll, we'll come back in and we'll discuss the results. Okay, this is the 12 gauge portion of our program. Now what I will tell you is some of those were number four buckshot and some of those were number one or uh, double aught buckshot and I think the double aughts the patterns were just too thin to hit the bottles but they could certainly hit a bigger target. So they're all down and when we do the wrap up we'll see how many we hit and what kind of damage we did but for now I'm going to reset and I'm going to shoot the AR. Uh, set of targets. Okay, this is one 30 round magazine of nozzle or ballistic tips through an AR-15.
And that's it there. So we'll run the timer and see. As you can see, about the first half dozen, I really screwed the pooch on shooting those. I wasn't hitting my targets at all. We're only at uh, between 15 and 25 yards here. So that gives you an idea. We'll set the synchros and the timer up and we'll uh, figure out where we're at. Hey guys, welcome back. I uh, hope you enjoyed that demonstration. Again, I haven't had time to watch it back myself, so I don't know what the time differential is. Um, what I've got here, I shot the shotgun first, and then I reset. Now, I didn't video this, and I probably should have for the naysayers, but I think the video speaks for itself. There were nine water bottles that were not hit. I did not have 16, excuse me, 18 rounds of any one type of buckshot, which is most likely what a bad guy would use. So I had to use, I believe there were 13 rounds of number four buck, and there were five rounds of double lot, if I remember correctly. The double lot did not impact anywhere close to where the number fours did, so I ended up missing a few. Um, if, if I'd have been shooting regular clays, which is really what I use a shotgun for for the most part, or, you know, number two steel for ducks, um, I think I would have hit more. But there were nine undamaged bottles during the shotgun round, and most of those, as you probably saw when I hit that back board, um, and they all fell over, there was only one damaged. However, there was, on the extreme right of that picture, there were deep furrows dug into the wood between uh, the three bottle, water bottles on the right where the buckshot had hit the wood and not hit the bottles. So that gives you an idea that, um, how's, how do I want to say this? That I'll tell you, the, the buckshot was there, it just didn't hit. Okay, what you see in front of me here is 10 bottles that were left over from the AR-15 exercise. Um, now, in all fairness, I kind of rushed my shots a little bit at the beginning of that. I didn't settle down and take my time, and that's, that's shame on me. Um, but you still end up with the same thing. You ended up with nine undamaged with the shotgun. You ended up with 10 undamaged with the AR-15. The damage to the bottles was virtually identical. A center hit with a shotgun shell pretty much destroyed the target. In fact, one of those tin cans was completely torn in half. And there was half a dozen of the water bottles that were likewise shredded. You know, they, they, they pretty much exploded when they got hit. Um, there were several, of the, there was a couple of them where I just barely grazed them and it was just barely leaking, but I counted that as a hit. So it gives you an idea. A bad guy can take an ordinary hunting gun and turn it into something for evil. The, I cannot stress strongly enough how idiotic the, the gun control people are. Unless you want to ban them all, in which case you'll have the situation you have in Britain, crime against people has gone up by like 900% because people know they can't defend themselves. And none of us, we're Americans. Our founding fathers founded this country with a Second Amendment, not for hunting, not for self-defense in the, in the sense we think about it today, but in, the, in a tyrannical government can not exist with an armed populace. We're close to that today, where they just walk in and do whatever they want to do. But the fact of the matter is, it would be worse if we weren't armed, because they know that puts limits on them. The American Revolution started because, I, I mean started as a shooting war, because the British marched on Lexington and Concord to do what? To confiscate the colonists' arms. Those who forget history, are doomed to repeat it. And that's where we're at today. But I wanted to give you this demonstration that it doesn't matter the kind of firearm. 
An equal amount of damage can be done by somebody who's planned and prepared with virtually any type of firearm. It doesn't matter what it is. The AR-15 is cool, and we have a lot of this Me Too stuff now. You know, hey, uh, Rakim did it, so, you know, I'm a high school kid who's going to do it. It doesn't accomplish anything, but give them their 15 seconds of fame, and the AR-15 is the cool weapon to do it with right now. But if they don't have easy access to AR-15s, they'll, you know, if they're a terrorist, again, box cutters, nitrate bombs, it doesn't matter. It's going to happen, but I'll, I'll get down off my soapbox now. So, um, something that's going to take a few years to come to fruition is I'm currently working on leaving the state of Washington. And I know people like Bob Ferguson will be just ecstatic about that. That's our state attorney general currently. Um, and I'm moving to Wyoming where they do actually respect the Second Amendment. And, uh, the property there soon I will be any if anything happens I'll just be transferring all my guns the state of Washington says I can't have to our property in Wyoming and uh, next time I go over there which probably will be a while yet um, I'll take some video of the property and show you where the new shooting range will be and will it'll be built for videoing and, and everything else but that's again a few years down the line as we get the website rolling as we my wife and I work our way towards that so again, you know, I, I want to thank you for watching. We appreciate you. We're nowhere without your support. Um, if you have any questions or comments, you know, feel free to contact us here on YouTube or you can contact us through the My Gun Values website. Um, we just had a gentleman contact us wanting some, uh, some comparisons on some different 3030s and we're working on that. And uh, hopefully we, have, we hope to have that up in the next two to three weeks. So again, if you, you know, if you have anything, please, you know, just, just contact us. We'll be more than happy to, uh, we'll be more than happy to do whatever we can to bring you the information you'd like to have. So thanks for watching and have a good day.